Hello, this is Pastor Sam Velez, and I'm so glad that you're joining us for our service. We hope you enjoy this message today, that it blesses your life and your families. We love you. And I want to talk about what it means to take care of your personal life. And the title of my message is Soul Care. It's Soul Care. In fact, if you have your Bibles, I want you to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, and it says this. It says, now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. And here, here's the thing. I'm not talking about developing a skill. I'm talking about keeping your soul. Keeping your soul. Throughout the Bible, we, we, we see this word soul everywhere. You see the word soul in almost every book, you, you see the word soul all the time. And we read in Thessalonians when Paul talks about that we would keep our soul. That means we will be healthy in every area, our soul, our spirit, and our body. And so I wanted to really deal with that the next couple of weeks because I want us to understand that if our soul is healthy, our life is healthy. If you can take care of you, You'll be able to take care of other people because sometimes what happens is you you have to understand something. I can't give you what I don't have. And if I don't have that, then I need to get it. If I need to give love and I need to give support, but I don't have that deep in me, I can't give it. I'll try to give it, but here's the thing. It'll be so exhausting for my life when it shouldn't be. Loving your neighbor should not be exhausting. Having faith for tomorrow shouldn't be exhausting. If anything that you do that God has called you to do is exhausting for your life, then there's a problem. If you feel exhausted to give yourself to something, then there is a problem. And the problem most likely is our soul. Our soul, here's the definition of your soul. Your soul is your mind, it's your emotions, it's your imaginations, it's your will. It's the invisible and tangible thing of your life. That is your soul. It's your mind, your will, your emotions, it's your imaginations. That is your soul. There is a difference between spirit and soul, and sometimes we get it mixed up. Or sometimes we think it's the same thing, and maybe the Bible just likes to use soul sometimes, and maybe the Bible just likes to use spirit sometimes. But there's actually a difference. In fact, Hebrews 4.12 says it best. If you can put it up there, I want, I want to show you the difference. Because sometimes the Word of God is the one that causes separation so that we can understand it better. It says this. It says, For the Word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and soul and spirit between joint and marrow it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires so soul and spirit are not the same thing in fact i'm going to get it probably next sunday i'm going to get a little bit more deeper into spirit because today i'm talking about soul but here's a little snippet john 3 if you can go to john chapter 3 up there uh verse 6 it says this it says Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to the spiritual life. Humans can reproduce. In fact, so here's the thing. Your spirit, you cannot access your spirit by natural ways. The Bible says it's through the Holy Spirit. It's through the Word of God. If you want to know what your spirit is like, you'll find it in the Word. In fact, go to John chapter 6, verse 63. It says this, it says, The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have, I have spoken to you are spirit and life. You want to know about the Spirit of God? You'll find it in the Word of God. And so next Sunday, I'll, I'll dive deeper. If you're like, man, well, what's the difference? I need to know this now. I'll dive it deeper because this isn't, this series is going to probably be a, I'm going to do it at a slower pace because I want, I want you and I want myself to understand the difference from my life. And the, obviously, you know what your body is. It's your flesh. Your flesh. So I don't have to explain body to you at all. But there is a difference. And so today, I want to talk about soul care. 
Because God gave you a soul and it's your job to keep it. In other words, it's your responsibility, church, to steward your soul. It's your responsibility to steward your mind, your emotions, your will, your imaginations. It's your responsibility to take care of your soul. It's not your mom's responsibility. It's not even your spouse's responsibility. It is yours and yours alone because you're the one at night that sleeps and you're the one that thinks and nobody thinks for you. You're not a robot. Nobody gets to tell you how to think. You have your own mind. You have your own heart. You have your own feelings. You God's giving you a will and it is your responsibility to steward that will. That's why I titled this soul care because if I can take care of my soul, my life will not be as chaotic as it has been at times. Ever felt like your life is chaotic, like your emotions are everywhere and and, and your mind is everywhere and your imaginations, you begin to start creating scenarios in your mind that shouldn't have never been created and you begin to think a certain way and it's not because God put that in your mind, it's because you created it in your own thoughts. That's why sometimes when people are dealing with victimhood, it's not that people are against you. It's you've created that in your mind. You've allowed the enemy to infiltrate and lie to you to make you think that you are a victim. Because the last time I checked, the Bible tells me that I am a more than conqueror in Christ Jesus. Amen. So how do we take care of our soul today, church? How can me and you not feel like my life is chaotic and feel like, man, my life is just everywhere and I feel like I can't get it together and I feel like I can't be happy and I feel like I can't just get things done. The Bible says to guard your heart. If there's one, I'm only only doing one point today. Guard your heart. Solomon said it best in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. He says this, he says, Um, To guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Guard your heart. Remember, your soul is your mind, your emotions, everything, your will. It says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Like I just said seconds ago, if your life feels chaotic, there might be a heart issue. And the issue isn't that you, don't, you have a bad heart and you're a bad person. It's because maybe we haven't been guarding our heart the way we really should be. In other words, some of you need to understand that to guard your heart, you need to put a fence, not a wall. Pain will make you put a fence, put a wall in your life instead of a fence. And here's the difference, church. The difference between a fence and a wall is this, is a fence always has a gate. And I can let the right things in and I can let the wrong things out. But so many times, we, we, because of pain and because of destruction, because all these things, what we think we got to do is I got to put up a wall. And therefore, because I put up a wall, I'll never get to let the bad things out in my life that I need to let go of because I got a wall. And I'm keeping that wall and I'm not letting anything come in. But how are, you so be, how are you going to be transformed if the Spirit of God can't come in? How can you say, God, I want to be brand new. God, do something new in my life if I'm always putting a wall because of what happened to me? Because of what happened in my past. Because of this situation. And instead of putting fences, we create walls. But I'm here to let you know that if you want a healthy soul, put a fence. Create a fence around your heart. You guard it with a fence. And you allow what God's trying to do in. You allow the word of God to come in. You allow the Holy Spirit to come in. You allow every good and perfect thing from the Lord to come in. And everything that comes against the word of God has to come out. But you are responsible with the gate. You are responsible with what comes in and comes out. You are responsible with what you let in and what you let out. In other words, sometimes here's the problem. People don't have standards. 
And if you want to create that gate, you got to create a standard for your life. A standard that you will not lower. Because a lot of times, what, what, what the problem with standards is we think standard means judgment. Oh, they're judging me. I'm, when I put a standard in my life, I'm, it's not because I'm judging you. It's because I know me. And I know what I'm worth. And I know what I bring to the table. And anything that comes against that, I can't have. Am I making sense this morning? Amen. You're getting me nervous here. And so we think standard is judgment. Oh, they're just, they're being judgy. Or, they, or, or man, they just, they think they're better than else. And, they, and all these things are happening instead of realizing that, no, I need a standard. Because if I don't have a standard, anything will come in and destroy what God's trying to do. I got to put a standard. I can't let everybody and everything come into my life and it come into my mind and come into my thoughts. I got to create the standard so that those things don't come and destroy what God's been trying to do in my life. Whether that's through people, through things, whatever that is, you create the standard and you lower it for nobody. That's how you guard your heart. Above all else, Above all else, create the standard in your life. You know what works best for you. You know what's healthy. Nobody knows you but you. No matter how much you've opened up your heart to other people, no matter how much you've been able to uh, 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 let people know how you've been, nobody knows you but you. Nobody knows what ticks you off. Nobody knows you what sets you off. Nobody knows you what makes you happy as much as you do. And nobody knows what destroys you as much as you do. Nobody knows. But if you can take a step back, and say, okay, this is what's been good for me. And every time I've raised my standard to this point, I do better in my life. And my life is not as hazy and foggy. And my life is not as, how, as bad as it is because I put this there. But every time I take it out, I go back to my old cycles. I go back to my old way of doing things. My old thought process, the way I used to do things. But that's why I'm here to encourage you to put it back. Put the standard back in your life. Put the fence up. Take down the wall and allow God to do a new thing. Can I tell you something? God is faithful. And he is faithful to transform your life. And he's faithful to break every curse that the enemy's been trying to put. God is the kind of God that will break through in your life. He will raise you up. He will raise you up from the dead. Amen? That's the kind of God we serve. A God that will do a new thing. He is faithful and he loves you enough. And he will send the Holy Spirit to remind you of who you are. Don't let the devil speak lies into your ear, into your heart, into your minds to make you, you think less of yourself. And to make you lower yourself to please other people in your life. Because you think that that's the way to live. No, raise the standard. Guard your heart. Solomon, the wisest man after Jesus, to ever walk the earth, said, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Proverbs 4, 23. It determines the course of your life. You got a plan. You got purpose. You got a direction that you're trying to go to. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. And in guarding your heart, create a divine rhythm for your life. Create a divine rhythm. Like I said, I'm not here to tell you to create, develop a new skill set. I'm here to remind you, you have to keep your soul. Jesus said it best. He said, what good is it to gain the whole world yet lose your soul? Does it make sense now when the word soul? What good is it to gain the whole world? What good is it? We've been taught in our culture today to keep our image and we don't keep our soul very well. We've been taught, man, keep your image. Make sure your image is good. And it's been drilled in our spirit for so long that before we realize that we're keeping our image but we're losing our soul. I got the image, I got the looks, I got the likes, 
I got the way people view me. I got all the things, but I am dying on the inside. And God came not for your image, but for your soul. Jesus didn't die so that you can have the best image. He died so that you can be saved, church, and resurrected and transformed and to find love and to live with the power of the Holy Spirit. He didn't die for anything else. Those are preferences that humanity puts on people. And if we're not careful, church, we'll create, we'll follow patterns of this world because we think that those patterns are what's going to fix what's happening on the inside. If I do steps one, two, and three, that the world tells me of the patterns, that's why Paul said in the book of Romans, he said, do not copy the behaviors of this world or the patterns of the world, but renew your mind. Renew your mind. Make an effort, church, to watch and keep your soul. We have this culture that's this, this grind culture all the time. I got to grind. I got to grind. I got to grind. I got to make it. I got to make it. I got to make it. I got to do. I got to do. I got to do. And the, rea- the problem with grind culture is that that's what God never meant for your life. This grind culture, before you know it, we have a bunch of workaholics and absent parents. Absent brothers and sisters. Absent people. And God never created you to be a workaholic. I'm not saying don't work, don't work hard, don't, don't try. No, 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 no. You need to work. You need to try. You need to develop. You need to build that business. You need to open, you know, try this degree. You need to do those things, church. But the problem with grind culture is that I put more effort in the grind than I do to myself. Where in the Gospels did we see Jesus running? Oh, wait. Where did Jesus run in the Gospels? Never. The Bible says he walked. He walked towards people. He walked with his purpose. He walked to heal people. He walked to preach the gospel. He walked to demonstrate. He walked. Never do we see Jesus Jesus anxious, running in a hurry, you know, stressed out. Jesus simply walked to his purpose and what God called him to do. You don't see him running. See, because that's very Adam-like. That's a very Adam-like nature to, to a very self-destructive, a very self, uh, um, st- a stressful way of living where you are fear-driven and not faith-driven. I got I, I, back in the day, they used to use the word FOMO, fear of missing out. I got to do this because if I don't do this, I'm going to miss out on this. I, I got to I gotta get this because if I don't get this, I'm going to miss out on this. And all you're doing is you're working to live. You're working to survive, and it's fear-driven. It's not faith-driven. Yes, work. Yes, build what God's called you to build. Yes, do those things that God has put you in. You, some of you have to understand, you, God has placed you where you are at, in that job, in that position, to be a light in the darkness, to live with purpose, to make something of what God has done in your life. You are the messengers. You are the priests of this, of this place. You are the preachers, amen? God has put you there. I know sometimes that you feel like, God, why am I here? It's because you have something that God needs in your life. The Bible says this, that God created the world in six days and he rested on the seventh. God didn't rest because he was tired, like, oh man, it's, I'm just tired. No, no. He rest, he, he, he stopped on the sand, not because he was tired, but because he accomplished something. He was accomplished. No, he wasn't tired. He accomplished something. Every time we come to church on Sundays and we're resting and, and you're, you're going to spend time in a few minutes with your family and you're going to have all these, you know, you're going to have a good time. All those things are important, church. 
because it gives us time to rest and reflect and to let the word of God come and build us up again, to hear from the Lord, to enjoy our family. God didn't do that because, oh, we have to, we have to come on Sunday because we need to rest because we're, we're tired. Although, yes, sometimes you work a lot and you do get tired. No, no. God, we're doing this because we've accomplished what God's called us to do throughout the week. And we're just receiving from the Lord today. That's all it is. When it starts feeling like work to serve God, it is no longer serving God. And I'm working again. I'm grinding again. I'm grinding to come to church. It's not grinding. But create a divine rhythm. Create a pattern for your life where you understand that, God, you've given me six days or five days. I don't know how many of you have different jobs. You have different schedules. However that works. But create space, church. If you want to take care of your soul, create space to rest. Create space to rest in the Lord. Create space to hear from God. Create space to renew yourself. Create the space. Don't let grind culture get to you and make you feel like, man, I'm not doing enough and I got to go harder and I got to go sleepless nights and I got to do this. I gotta. Don't let culture make you work in a way that God never intended you to work in. Because we hear it all the time. Y'all remember the rapper 50 Cent? I'm not going to rap for you his songs, but you remember. You're in. In the club's probably coming in some of your minds right now. But 50 Cent one time said this. They, 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 they were talking about working, and he said, um, they told him, do you ever, they asked him, like, do you ever sleep? And he said, he goes, sleep? Sleep is for people that are broke. You see the mentality of grinding? That you're constantly grinding, and there's no rest? That is a humanistic mindset that God never intended in his word. When I, hear me, I'm not saying don't work. I'm not saying tomorrow morning, quit your job. No, no, no. Work. 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 Do, do what God has called you to do. If you're a teacher and you got the summer off, work at being a being with your family, being more present. Serve. If you're not doing anything in this summer, if you're a teacher, serve at VBS. Yes, do, do something. But what I am saying is that if you want to guard your heart and if you want a soul care and you don't want to run on empty all the time, then create a pattern that follows the Lord. Create a pattern that God created for us. Create a pattern for your life. Like I said, you know your life more than anybody. You know you. You are the one person that knows you more than anybody else. Church, I believe if we can do that today, starting today, we'll be able to see the God lift up the burdens that we've been dealing with for a long time. Amen? Because that's God's intention, that she would live a rested life, a, a fruitful life, a life that's multiplying, a life that's constantly bl- uh, building, a life that is blessing. That is what God created you to be. And you can't be if you're always stuck with what was, and you're always stuck with grinding, and you're always putting up walls. Some of you today, you understand the concept of wall because you've had a wall for a long time. Nobody can tell you. Nobody can get through to you. Nobody can tell you. Or maybe you've put up the wall yourself because you think you know better and you're missing out on the voices that need to be in your life. Because there are right voices and there are wrong voices. If the voice in your life gets you further from the Lord and like I said last week, makes you more like you think you're God and no one can tell you what to do and you do you, Toxic person. Put a fence. Let in what you need to let in. Let out what you need to let out. But let God continue to reign. Amen? You can stand on your feet. 
We got a lot of stuff happening. Chill and search after service. They're going to, or Spanish service, we're going to clear out a lot of things. This place is going to look different this week. The team has been working very, very hard. I'm excited for what God's going to do uh, this week with our children. If you want to sow a seed to our children's ministry, you, you are more than welcome to. You know, we're, you're saying, you know, Pastor Sam, I can't, I can't come this week or can't volunteer. I can't do any of that. But if you want to support, you know, sow a seed, sow a seed. Help them out. So I need you to let everybody know, friends, coworkers that didn't come today. Hey, we're, do, we're talking about the spirit, soul, and body for the next couple of weeks. Spirit, soul, and body. The difference, we just read it, Hebrews 4.12. The spirit and the soul are very different things, not the same thing. But I do want to pray with you before we leave. Because maybe there's some of you in this room and you're saying, Pastor Sam, I've been overwhelmed. Like, my soul is not okay. My soul's not okay. And I need God to bring healing. Jesus said in the gospel, he said, all of you that are heavy and burdened, he says, come to me and I will give you rest. He says, I'll give you rest. You feeling restless, it's the spirit of God that gives you rest. You're feeling overwhelmed. It's the spirit of God that brings peace. That's who God is. God's not a God that comes and makes things worse for your life. Or he's just here to make you feel worse and make you feel bad. No, no, no. He wants to bring you peace. I've never met a person in my life that says, I love not having peace in my life. Oh, I just love being angry every day. I love punching the walls. Makes me feel good. Nobody says that. It's the opposite. People are like, man, I want to stop being angry. I want to stop talking like this. I want to stop acting like this. I want to stop. That's because in our, we don't even think about it. When we say things like that, like I need to stop this. Without thinking about it, that is because you were never created to do that outside of God. Anything that's contrary to the word of God, you were never meant to do that. That's why you understand that I need to stop. I need to let go. I need to find rest in God. With your eyes closed, I want to pray with you. You say, Pastor Sam, I need soul care. I am everywhere and nowhere. I need God to come and heal my heart. Thank you so much for joining our service and for listening to us. We are located at 4519 East Del Mar Boulevard in Laredo, Texas. And we hope that you continue to be a part of our ICM family.